Yo, this is Austin from Calling Our Shot, and today I am going to build the worst starting lineup in the NBA this year. I want to see your guys' teams below after you hear mine, and I want to see what you guys have cooked up. But I got a couple rules first. One, you got to like and subscribe this video. That's not really a rule, but we got to get into this. One, they actually have to be a starter. I don't want you to pick Ken Birch, Cristiano Felicio. I don't want those players in your lineup because that won't fit the next two rules that I got. So one, they got to be a starter on an NBA team. Two, and arguably the biggest, they have to play 30 minutes a game. There can't be someone that starts and might only play five minutes, 10 minutes a game. They got to play 30 minutes a game. I'm using basketball references, kind of calculator that has every player that plays 30 minutes per game. They got them all sorted down here. And then number three, they got to play the realistic position. Like, obviously, you can, might be able to play someone that sometimes plays small forward but starts at power forward, power forward to center, things like that. You can do that, but I don't want you putting Eric Bledsoe at the center position just because you know that will be a terrible team. That's not acceptable. Eric Bledsoe could fly as, like, a shooting guard or a point guard, but anything worse than that, that's not realistic. So here's my worst team, and at point guard, we got to start with Lonzo Ball. And man, it feels bad disrespecting him. I loved him coming out of UCLA, but he has not looked good so far in his career. And he's especially playing very poorly so far to start this year. Just as a split, he's playing 31 minutes a game, a little under that. Shooting 39.9% from the field, 32.5% from three. I did consider his teammate Eric Bledsoe, who also plays over 30 minutes a game. And I've gone into a spiel on our other videos about how they're a terrible backcourt fit. One of them needs to come off the bench. Regardless, both of them start right now as of February 3rd. And yeah, I got to put Lonzo Ball, give him the edge. He's not shooting well. He is a better playmaker than Eric Bledsoe. But when you see the rest of my team, it doesn't matter how good of a playmaker you are. You guys aren't going to score points. And that leads us into our next player. And that would be Isaac Okoro at shooting guard. I love Isaac Okoro. I think he's a very good player. Definitely has some promise in his career. But overall, if you've watched him shoot this year, you would know. He plays 35 minutes a game, shoots 42% from the field. But when you look at the three-point percentage, 29%. That's terrible. He's also not shooting a lot. He's got Sexton on his team. He's got Drummond who chucks up a ton of shots. And he has another player that will fall on the lineup in a little bit. But yeah, he hasn't been that good this year. And so that's why he's going to come in at our shooting guard position. And that's he's going to fill that role out. He'll play good defense, but... We won't be able to score to save our lives. And speaking of someone that can't score to save their lives, one of our, my favorite players, not really, Rolls Royce, Royce O'Neal of the Utah Jazz at our small forward position. Yikes. Yeah, uh, there's not much to say about Royce O'Neal. If you watch him play, I, I don't know what the Utah Jazz see in him. He's a good defender, I guess. But the man is so, if you see him drive to the basket, you know he's just going to chuck it up at the backboard, and it's going to be a brick. Whatever he is, it could be a wide-open layup. He's going to miss it. He at least knocks down a couple shots, but on this team, he's going to have to generate baskets and actually score to keep us in the games. And I'm not here to break it to you. He won't be able to do that. Royce O'Neal, he plays way too many minutes, honestly, but I don't blame the Jazz. They need someone that plays some defense on there with Rudy Gobert because Donovan Mitchell... Mike Conley's a good defender, but Bojan Bogdanovic's not known for his defense. So I can see that. So to recap, we got at point guard, Lonzo Ball, Isaac Okoro at shooting guard, Royce O'Neal at the three. And then next, it was tough. It was tough to decide between power forward and centers. And I do have a player that plays at power forward, but also plays at center at the center position. But I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with PJ Tucker. He currently, you've seen him play small ball center. You've seen him play power forward. You've seen him play small forward. He's played all the positions, but he's got to fit on this team. He's someone that can't create his own shot. And yeah, that's basically all we need on this team. He can knock down the corner three and he shoots the ball, what, 45, 46% from the field, 40% from three. But you've never seen him go out and post someone up or you know, create his own shot. And he's going to have to do that on this team, which is why he comes in at our four guard, at our four spot. And then rounded off at center. And this is a player that normally plays power forward, but does play some center. And it will be, drum roll please, Blake Griffin. If you have watched Blake Griffin this year, you've seen him stink up the joint a lot of games. And yeah, he's averaging a little over 11 points on the year. 
12 points to be exact, shooting 37% from the field. Surprisingly, he's shooting better from three. That makes zero sense. He's shooting 40% from three. But, sorry, that was a typo. No, he's shooting 33% from three. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, Blake Griffin has been terrible this year, and not a surprise to see him on this list. Granted, these players are talented. I'm not saying they're the worst five players in the NBA. Don't get me wrong. They are not that. Some of these players are good, but they aren't playing too well, and they have to fit the 30-minute restriction, which really, when you look at it, it does limit your your response, the amount of players. I'm looking at it right now. There's only 91 players that play 30 minutes a game. So you have a limited amount of players. There aren't many centers out there. As you see, you'll see a Rick, Rickwan, Richon Holmes. You'll see Steven Adams there, but I didn't want to put them on the list. So I put Blake Griffin, who's been struggling all year, struggling to hit shots, and he's just looked terrible for the Pistons this year. So to recap, my worst starting five in the NBA this year, we got Lonzo Ball, shooting guard, Isaac Okoro, small forward, Rolls Royce O'Neal, power forward, PJ Tucker. I also considered Larry Nance Jr. there and at center. Or you could put P.J. Tucker at center, whatever you want, at center, Blake Griffin. Let me know your teams down below. I'm curious what you guys cook up because this was fun to generate and fun to kind of look at the players that I think are playing way too many minutes for these bad teams. But if this is your first time, check out our website at callonourshot.com. We post a lot of NBA, NFL articles there. And feel free to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at callonourshot. But lastly, but most importantly, click that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out more than you will ever know. Thank you. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.